and this is Gamer Culture. Live. Alrighty, we are live with the first Gamer Culture video pod- podcast. Dear Christ, that took a lot of work. Thank you very much for <laughs> setting all of that up. Oh, um, you guys have no idea. <laughs> all right, just to make this fancy and everything, uh, let's go ahead with the intro really quick. Welcome, everybody. Today is Sunday, October 30th, 2016. Gamer Culture is the drive, passion, and dedication to all things gaming by the Grand Geek Gathering. The ever-changing world of gamer culture involves communities of all types, the ever-changing industry that surrounds us, and the people who use it for the betterment of all. Now on to character select with the question of the week. What is your favorite video game villain? Let's start off with Wildcard. Go ahead, bud. Oh, man. Favorite villain? That would have to be a tie. Is that okay? Can I have two choices? Yeah, why not? Go ahead and channel Tyler. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One choice would have to be... Voss, I think it was, what's his name? Or Vaughn from uh, Far Cry 3. thought you were going to say Vaughn from Final Fantasy 12. I'm like, hold up. He's, he's the protagonist. He's a villain in my book. <laughs> <laughs> he's worse than the Titus laugh. I, he's a great villain um, from Far Cry 3. I, should I just say now that there's going to be spoilers since we're talking oh, about yeah, villains? Oh, yeah, spoil the shit out of this. It, yeah. Most of the games we're going to be talking about have been around for a while, so if you haven't seen them, your fault. Yeah, yeah, like, you're chasing this guy around the island, he's crazy. Just look at the trailers for Far Cry 3. Like, mm-hmm. it's... And, um, the worst thing about Far Cry 3 is that they replace him. He dies halfway through the game and they replace him with someone else who's far more bland and boring. <laughs> Gosh. Lovely. Yeah. So... There's that, um, but he's just, he's the, I don't know, he's crazy, but just in the, not sure if you're serious or if you're still joking, but I find you entertaining kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay. Like, he's a complete sociopath. Um, Gosh. The other choice would have to be Handsome Jack from Borderlands. Oh, he's good. Yeah. I almost went with him. I almost went with Handsome Jack. Because for a while, he was the only villain that I've ever, like... For, for a while, I really liked, and then he did something in the game. Um, but uh, We already said it's going to be spoilers. He killed, When he killed Bloodwing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that right there, I, I was like, oh my god, I've never hated a fake character this much. And <laughs> I read the chapter where Snape kills D- Dumbledore. Like, Boy, we I, I was spoiler crazy today. Yes. Yeah. You know what? That, look, that's, that's so old look, now, if you guys, don't know that. Guys, Snape kills D- Dumbledore. I'm sorry. No! Oh my god. Also, Lucas added that no into Star Wars. So, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I agree. It's he's he's a great villain to hate. Yeah, and that's the sign of a great villain. It's like I hate this guy so much, but I want to see more of him. <laughs> oh, oh, you're devious, sir. Go on. Exactly. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are your villains? Yeah, those, those, those All are right. your choices. Alright, next up, Squeaky Bear. Uh, you pointed the wrong Squeaky way. Squeaky Bear, Game Maker. Okay. For me, it's the right way. No. The other way. Other way? So it's other that way? way. That way to Kuma, and uh, Squeaky's right above me. Yeah. Look, I'm looking at. We don't know I'm where everybody at the is. right now, alright? <laughs> <laughs> so, Squeaky Bear Gamer here, and I. Guess for me, I'm gonna have to choose two as well. It's kind of very difficult because they are two I'm different have to reasons. A second, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh oh. Oh, uh, did we lose Uh-oh. squeaks? Uh oh. Oh, you this, know the the this shadow is what guy. Happens on a live Wait. podcast. No. Okay, Am squeaky. We can hear? Yeah, we can hear you again. You're, you're Go ahead. It's storm. Dorman. Dorman from, Dorman from Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I'm feeling you. I think that that is actually a very good setup for a villain because you don't know very much about him and you don't even realize that he's a villain. You actually kind of rely on. Oh, uh oh. And I like. 
Oh, we, we lost you. And it hits you. There. You knew it was coming, but this. We lost you again. Am I here? Maybe. Yeah, you're you're cutting in and out. You're There's here, something funny going now. on. Okay. Um. Well, that's beautiful. So. Yeah, Dorman from Shadow of the Colossus is that. Um, and then also, I'm just going to go with Nintendo for Zelda. I have to say my favorite Zelda villain, because it's definitely not Ganondorf, because Ganondorf is way too generic. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say, like, Nintendo is the villain. for like, Nintendo is the villain. <laughs> he is the villain. It's one of my favorite villains. <laughs> yes. Um, so there are like a lot of good villains in especially like the handheld games like burn is a really cool villain because he is that's the um, spirit tracks one and he's like the sidekick that is being controlled by a guy and he's being evil but he's actually really cool and humble he's doing stuff for right but he's got it all backwards <laughs> but that's not the person I'm choosing I'm choosing gear him from skyward sword because he's just fabulous. Oh, the, uh, he's, uh, the I don't know that Pokemon. first boss. No, he's like the main villain throughout Skyward Sword. I, I only finished the guy. The, I only finished the first dungeon of <laughs> Skyward Sword. I know. <laughs> I, I <laughs> look. You have catching up to do on Ruby. I have catching up to do in Zelda. I'm a, I'm halfway through season three now. I watched like three hours today. Please give me some credit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but Gearham is just so awesome. He's like this disgusting, like self self absorbed guy. And my brother and I make this joke that he's Demon Lord Gaga because he like looks like <laughs> Lady Gaga. He's just like, ha, ha, ha. it's it's just a perfect villain for Zelda. It's really it's really gorgeous. So oh, it, please great. play the it. game. Please play the game, all guys. Right, right, right. I'll, such I'll a good it. game. I have it. I have it, okay? I'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's hard. Or watch it. Just watch it, actually, now. <laughs> you don't have to play it. You can just watch it somewhere on YouTube. Is, are you sure? I'm with, pretty with sure. With Nintendo's policies, are you sure? I want to say I'm sure, because a lot of YouTubers have been posting Nintendo stuff as long as they have an agreement with them. One person whose name is Chad Tronic, he does specifically Nintendo-related stuff, and he gets away with doing it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So. so How do we you get have away to... with shit? Where's that button? <laughs> the get away with shit button. That is, uh, that is paid for DLC. I think it's, <laughs> it's mainly that you can't really get like monetization out of it like they don't allow that for nintendo stuff so i think yeah. that's the main thing Game i'm just fine business edition <laughs> business, business edition business business money okay money. was i fine there yeah all right kuma it everything is your good turn. yep all righty so my favorite villain as i frantically try and think of a second one to match y'all uh favorite villain of all time is gotta be uh sephiroth Sephiroth has got a like for the longest time Sephiroth has just been like the villain for me because mm -hmm. he starts off when you first see him he's like oh he's uh you know he's Cloud's buddy he's his mentor and he, he's there's a when you do a flashback with in Final Fantasy 7 um you fight with him on your team and Cloud goes up and he's like I'm gonna swing my sword and he does like double digit damage to this monster and then you play a Sephiroth and you cast a magic and it's just like these massive field nukes that just wipe out everything in one <laughs> cast. And then of course he's got the Masamune, which is just that big long sword. It's massively longer in Final Fantasy VII than it is in probably any other publication. Uh, King <laughs> Kingdom Hearts, I think it's also pretty massive. But in um It's almost like he's compensating for something, you would say. Ah, he totally ah, went there. Hey, hey, he um, is a Japanese man. Hey, gosh. Hey, hey, racist hey, We're doing racism oh, gosh. now. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> no, it's like It's all right. And it, I mean, Kuma's, the, the, Kuma's part Mexican. We can yeah, make racist it's, jokes. I sure. <laughs> um <laughs> that's a fact. Um <laughs> no, like, and and the whole like the big damage thing aside, like I just love how he's just. You can make the jokes that he's just like the biggest mama's boy, like vil like villain. Um, although I would argue 
um, I, God, fun, what's his name? Seymour from Final Fantasy X. Probably even Seymour bigger. Seymour was fabulous. He was not a mama's boy. He was fabulous. Um, Anima was literally his mother. Like, okay. his mom was Anima. He's, I'm sorry, he, he was a mama's boy. Um, like, his main summon was his mom. Um, <laughs> no, but also just like, Oh, Cloud's one source of happiness in life was Aerith. And Sephiroth decides, ah, you know what? Stab to the heart. Stab to the heart and you're to blame. Cloud's going to drop you in a river and now you probably die. No. <laughs> That's a game <laughs> Gosh. idea. God, um, that is... No, but yeah, he's always... Can I, can I just quit he's this always podcast been my favorite. now? That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's also really interesting in his depiction in Kingdom Hearts 2, where they go for the fact that he's less of his own character and more of he just represents the darkness made manifest in Cloud's heart. Mm-hmm. And that that's why Cloud can't escape him, because he's always going to be with him. Although it was disappointing when we beat the shit out of Sephiroth, and at the end of it, we burn through like 13 health bars. And at the very end of it, he's like, hmm, you're pretty good. But I guess only Cloud can beat me. I'm like, no, fuck you. I just beat the <laughs> shit out of you. I ground for months, putting hours and hours into making the ultimate keyblade. I learned everything. I died against you maybe ten times. Fuck yourself, Sephiroth. I <laughs> beat you. And you get to do it again in the sequel. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about King- Kingdom Hearts 2. In Kingdom Hearts oh, okay, 1. Yeah. Sephiroth was pretty much you know, in uh, in the first one when he was voiced by Lance Bass. Um, he pretty much like you you go into the arena. He summons in. You fight him, and then he leaves. There's no like you don't see him other times. There's no interaction. He just shows up. You kill him, and he leaves. But yeah, that's my favorite villain. I can't really think of like a number two at the moment. Like there's so many good villains in gaming. Mm-hmm. There's also a like, lot of bad ones, too. True. I mean, oh, maybe gosh. the most satisfying to kill was probably Zeus in, in, in Kingdom Hearts and God of War 3. <laughs> Only because, I mean, God of War 3, God, I, I loved that game. I did a paper on that game in college, um, like uh, comparing and contrasting it to the hero's journey. Um, but uh, halfway through the game, not even halfway through the game, late in the game, when you have the character um, uh, Pandora, and she's like, oh, she was specifically created to be a key to open Pandora's box. And you learn she has to sacrifice herself to do it. And he believes that the power to kill a god is in that box. So she willingly, despite his protesting, kills herself to open that box. He opens it, and there's nothing in it. Goodness. And there Zeus is, just... There is no hope. Is that Zeus, well, it's because the hope was already inside of Kratos from the first game when he opened it the fir- first time. Um, but, yeah, Kratos, like, and then, then you have Zeus just, like, mocking you. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, in the first game, you're you're just like, okay, you're kind of a dick. Second game, you're the worst kind of per- person. The third game is just, when you beat his head against a rock and you get the achievement, like, when you can kind of still see through your screen... When it's just like sprayed with blood, I beat his head against that rock until I couldn't see the screen anymore, and it felt good. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got issues. <laughs> All right, so moving on from the question of the week, um, you, you usually we go into the section called the grind, which is normally when we discuss what games we've been playing th- this week. Uh, has that really changed for anyone in the coming uh, in the past couple weeks? Has anyone been playing, been playing something new? Or I know it, come November, I'm going to have plenty to, to t- talk about between Pokemon, Final Fantasy, whatnot, but anyone? Mm-hmm. Well, Bueller? there was a dungeon that was released in World of Warcraft that we only got about halfway through. Oh, right, right. So anyone who d- doesn't play WoW, they re-released a dungeon called Karazhan. Karazhan is the wizard's tower of, if you watch the Warcraft movie, it's where the Guardian resides. In the mo- movie, that's Medivh. Uh, for a while, um... What's his name? Uh, Khadgar uh, spends some time there. But they just re-released it with now with the Legion expansion and that every like all the old gar- 
Guardians are back in ver- various ways. Like one of them's undead. There's some demons running around. Um, if you've ever, if you've ever seen the dungeon, if you mean, uh, if you mean Morose, Morose has always been undead. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the um, the Huntsman. Huntsman has always been undead. Has he? I didn't. Yep. I, I thought he was undead in the first one. Okay, never mind. But um, no. Na- as you go through now, they they updated the plays that are done in the Opera House. <laughs> there's um, there's I'm... Westfall story. Yeah. Um, Westfall story. Uh, Wicket. What's the third one? I'm, oh man, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but damn, it was good. Uh, S book. If you're watching or watch this later, sorry, there's no Hamilton. <laughs> I have to know what are the new Car- on. new Karazan plays plays opera event. Okay, yes, these are the old ones. Are they the new ones? The one we did this week was Wicket. Yes. Wicket is a uh, phrase that the monkey race, the Hosen, call like uh, like other people. Like, pretty much anyone who isn't a Hosen. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're, they're a Wicket. Um, so yeah, Wicket is basically just Wicked. And you fight the two witches. Gosh. Dungeon. <laughs> Oh, man, this is gonna bug me. Opera House. I can't spell opera. Um, o p e r a. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> I know, but I kept I kept screwing it up. Oh, uh, uh, going too fast. No one's talking about it. What the heck? Uh, yeah, everyone's talking about the new ones. Wow. Let's go to Wowhead. Yeah, this is old. Okay, y- you keep working on that. Um, yeah. Other than that, they've um, they're going to be releasing the new raids fairly soon, where you go into the the nightfallen town of Suramar. Here it is. Here it is. It's uh, what is it? Opera Wicket, the Westfall story, and Beautiful Beast. Beautiful Beast. That's what it was. Ah. Yeah, but so they yeah so they updated an old du- dungeon. There's some character change changes. They're going to be doing a new raid soon. You can do do some new new stuff in the nightfallen city. Um, you can keep being a terrorist or a freedom fighter, depending on your point of view. Um, I think that's it um, for WoW. Other than that, I haven't been playing anything else. It's been kind of slow for me for games. I know a lot, a lot of games are coming out, but, you know, money's a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like Titanfall 2 just came out the other day. I want to pick it up, but I can't afford it. <laughs> I want I want to pick it up. I want to play the, su- through the single player. I might do a Let's Play of it. Ooh, I like uh, Esbook chimed in with her favorite uh, villains. It's Kefka and Xehanort. Oh gosh, Xehanort. <laughs> I actually can't put Xehanort on there as my favorite because he just bugs me so much. <laughs> it has been so long I, I, since I played Kingdom Hearts 2. I have no idea what kind of a villain he was. Oh gosh, Lamp. I just hated him. I just I think- hated him. He was an interesting villain because of how dispassionate he was about all of his decisions because he had no heart. Yep. Because most of the other um, the other members of the organization, even though they had no heart and therefore had no emotions, they at least had personalities where they could fake them. Yeah. They desired to f- fake them. You know, they were either cocky or most of them were pretty co- cocky and arrogant. Mm-hmm. Um, various levels of cruel. But... Um, with Xehanor and Syx, I think his name was, like they were probably the most like just bland and flat and just we accept the fact that we have no emotions and we're not going to try and pretend to be anything we're not. Oh yeah, but then he did have some moments where he was like really scared, especially when he feared for his life. He actually did start showing emotions. Well, yeah, when it's like, oh, I'm about to die. Maybe I should fill this room with lasers. <laughs> Which prob that fight, dear God, doing that fight back to back for a couple hours and dying all the time, uh, my fingers would get so sore because it's just spamming triangle and X, deflecting all those fucking la- Speaking lasers. Speaking of uh, Kingdom, so much Kingdom Hearts, uh, a new version has been announced. Holy shit, two point eight. Yeah. Like what? Talk, com- you talking talk about that? Yeah. What comes in that? Okay. Well, I'm glad you asked, wild card. Okay, so tell, in a couple of me, months, Guma, explain it to me. 
All right, so in a couple of months, uh, March 31st, I believe it is, they are going to be re-releasing um, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5. Those are the remix ver versions of the game. So they have all of the content that was removed for whatever re reason from the Japanese games. So in the case of Kingdom Hearts, 1.5 had... Um, it had two more arena fights in the Hercules Arena. It had another fight when you're at the um, when you're at Hollow Bastion. I think it might also include Chain of Memories, like the console one. Mm -hmm. mm. And then two point let's see, one point five is Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts, and a cinematic version of three point five or three five eight Days Over Two. Um, and then two point five contains Kingdom Hearts Two, Birth by Sleep, and a cinematic version of Coded. So you're getting six games. Yes, and that comes out in March. Now in God, is it February? I believe it's February. January. January, we're getting two point eight, which will have the console version of Dream Drop Distance, as mm -hmm. well as its own, uh, as well as the cinematic version of the web browser game Unchained X. Uh, two point eight will will have Birth by Sleep: A Fragmentary Passage. Which prevents all new content that runs on the same engine as Kingdom Hearts 3. 2.8, which comes out in February, is di differs from 2.5, um, but comes out before. Um, yeah, it makes as much sense as the plot to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, pretty much. Um, that is going to lead, uh, supposed to lead us up into King Kingdom Hearts 3. It's in fact, I think it's called Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Prologue. Mm -hmm. Final chapter Prologue. Final chapter prologue, yeah. Um, I mean, this game is insanely po popular. <laughs> yeah, uh, correct S book. Te technically, Xehanort is three people. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, I loved. I've loved Kingdom Hearts since the fir first game. I've played. But I I've played one. I've played two, and I've played uh, Chain of Me Memories. Um, but the story is just so damn convoluted. It's fun. It's fun having it so big. But they make up their own fake science, and it's like, no, things don't work like that. As, uh, as a I psychology mean, student, like, memories okay. don't work that way. No, but, I and, mean, like, it's a whole cool concept just, still. And the whole thing is like, oh, your memory is, like, your memories are a part of your heart, so if your heart gets ripped out, your memories get all fragmented out, and... I'm sorry, things don't work that way at all. No, no, it doesn't have to work that way. The thing I like about it is it feels like more of like a lore and kind of like this oh. mystic thing rather than like something that can be more concrete. Yeah. It, it, it For me, Kingdom Hearts is very fantastical and I love that about it. Like it's mm -hmm. so big, so vast, oh. and there's so many questions about it oh, that yeah. I... It's probably one of the highest fantasy games I've ever played. Highest, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, when you like nothing in this series is realistic whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about it, though. Like, Kingdom Hearts isn't afraid to just do whatever it wants. I mean, look at Kingdom Hearts two when you play on the um, the Pirates of the Caribbean level. You're playing. In a world where, yes, like the undead exists, and like the later games got, or the later movies got very like high fantasy and supernatural. But in the fir first game, like, or the first movie, goddamn, in the first movie, ignoring the undead, it mostly followed regular rules, like of yeah. physics. Yeah, it did. And then we get our hands on it, and it's like, no, no, we're ignoring all of that. Uh, you can combo attack with Jack. To put people into a chest, beat, beat the shit out of someone, then throw them in a chest and have that chest explode. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I'm cool with this. Um, no, but you guys are absolutely right. That game, like, the, the level of fa fantasy that that game isn't afraid to do. Also, how dark it's not, not afraid to get. Oh, yeah. In a game where Mickey Mouse is in it, like... You would you, you would expect like oh this game's got Mickey Mouse and Donald and Goofy like it's got to be super lighthearted right it's like well King, uh, first of all Mickey travels around in a cape or like in a, in a black coat 
and beats the shit out of shadow monsters with a key. Uh, and then those guys over there, yeah, they're an organization of people who had their hearts ripped out, uh, which is pretty much their soul in Kingdom Hearts. Uh, it probably became a darkness demon. Oh, oh, and uh, that like soulless husk that they left behind. Yeah, it became one of them. These emotionless beings with a lot of power, but an inability to feel human. Dude, and you're like, yeah. I'm sorry, Mickey Mouse is in this game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I, I when I saw the game, I was like, oh, I'm going to get this for my brother. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to try it out and play it. And I'm like, this is not for my little brother. I guess I'll give it to him still, but I don't think he'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, uh, the stories like I've read flow charts for the story, and I still can't follow. Oh gosh! Do your brother enjoy it nowadays? Oh yeah, he loves it now. Yeah. He's obsessed. But he so, he couldn't understand it when he was eight. No, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> so sticking with uh, Square Enix talk, um, let's talk a li- little bit about Final Fantasy 15, which comes out next month. Uh, just went gold, which for anyone who doesn't know it, know what that means. The game is ready to go. Cool. All right, so they just need distribution, right? Yeah, so pretty much it's just final stages of advertising and um, and distributing. I have yet to watch the Kingsglaive movie, which I've heard from certain YouTube influencers that you really need to watch it because the game takes scenes in the game take on whole new meanings. I'm I'm bummed about that a li- little bit because it means I have to go elsewhere to really get a full feel of your story it's not just all going to be in the game well it looks like it's going to be a movie night soon for gk yeah we're gonna have to find it though because i think you have to order it we'll figure it out i mean it's the internet you can find anything on the internet that's (laughs) true it's very very true um let's see this yeah so they just announced that they're done with development officially gone gold so they are it it is going to be released by the end of november we're not going to get any any more of these pushbacks um in addition they announced the paris game games week it's going to feature uh quote lots of dlc which will also have an online multiplayer co-op that allows four people to play the game very interesting okay okay multiplayer co-op i can see that I'm like, down with that, because there's four people in your team. Yeah, each, each person playing a different member of the team. I can see that. That, that, yeah. that could be fine. But Here's what worries DLC? me. And we know it's not going to be free, because, and to my understanding, the first time ever with a mainstream Final Fantasy game, it's going to have a season pass for twenty four ninety nine. <laughs> Well, this is also the first Final Fantasy game released in the modern era. Fair enough. Uh, like for, the rest I'm of the sorry, DLC, no, there's going to be three episodes. Single player. Single player Final Fantasy game. Because yeah. Final Fantasy XIV is currently out, and uh, honestly, it's kicking ass. It is. I remember you showed me that one fight scene with Shiva, and it looks fucking amazing. Yep. Uh, the rest of the DLC it says there's going to be three episodes with new areas, new enemies, new additional weapons. Ta- talks about the season pass. Uh, the thing that worries me is the fact that it says, quote, lots of DLC. I'm really worried about what that means. Now, I, I, I trust them that this game is the complete game, that they hopefully didn't shave anything during yeah. the development process and that all the stuff that's going to be D- DLC is stuff that was af- after the initial development process. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really hoping they do like the Mass Effect 2 style DLC where... Like, yeah, we got the game, and it's a complete game. And then the DLC was, like, side missions, or, like, this character's story. That's yeah. fine. That's good DLC. But if they I do, agree. If they do the Mass Effect 3 style of DLC, where they literally just cut pieces of the game out and then sell that, that's no. No, that's terrible. Yeah, I'm hoping that people have learned their lesson enough from that, that you don't make your game and then cut pieces out as DLC. You make your game, and then anything you want to do after that, you do D- DLC. Yeah. I also would love to see the price point on that, because I don't trust season passes. There have been games that have come out where you buy the season pass, and then nothing comes out. Yeah, I see mm-hmm. season passes as like a lotto ticket. Sometimes you get yeah. good stuff, 
Other, but most of the time, you're not going to get anything from it or anything. I agree. Hundred percent agree. So I mean, I'm that worries me a li- little bit. But I mean, you know, I committed the cardinal sin and I pre-ordered Final Fantasy 15 because. How dare you? Shame. I. Shame. I yeah, know. shame. Shame. I, shame. Shame. Oh. Shame. Oh. Bad guys. I know. I'm terrible at human being. Um. <laughs> No, but I did. I I pre-ordered. I was in the GameStop and they had it out there and I was weak. Um I'm I'm still excited for it though. I was going to buy it anyway. Everything I've seen for it uh looks good. The Platinum demo was really fun to play. It felt like Kingdom Hearts in a Final Fantasy world. Okay. Which I know that's because the Kingdom Hearts development team worked on this. Mm. So, I mean, I'm down. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to play it. Um, but let's see what else has been going on this week. Uh, did you guys hear about Bethesda's announcement for what they're going to be doing on review copies? Yep. Yep. I, and I don't know what they're thinking. So quick highlight, and then we'll go crazy talking about it. Bethesda has announced that they are no longer going to be releasing early copies of games for review. Um, I've heard that some certain, like, YouTube, they're called influencers, are going to be allowed to get get them. So big personalities, like you might see your, like, PewDiePie might get something, Markiplier might get something, Jesse Cox, Total Biscuit. They might get stuff, but for the most part, traditional journalists, like guys at IGN, Kotaku, GameSpot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. not going to be getting review copies anymore until the day before um like like early release type type stuff so you'll get it the day like day before ma- main release but you're not getting anything in the weeks leading up and i'm shaking uh, my no? head in shame yeah, yeah. i'm and, shaking my head in shame 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 and why and I'm why not, is that I'm not on you know why this time <laughs> I mean, you you absolutely know know why, and that's because when you start doing stuff like that, you are now telling it it's it's sketchy, right? Yeah. yeah. It's almost like you, you're saying we might be a little worried that maybe this game sucks. Why aren't you letting people see it? Now, I guess maybe they're I think they're worried that you, you know oh we don't need to worry about people. Uh, saying our games aren't good, you know, you can trust us, we make good games. Um, but what if you make a stinker, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what if they make something that sucks, and by the time reviews are coming out, people have already bought it? That's what they're yeah. going for. That's exactly what they're going for. And it now is, there's some, it's terrible. There's argument against it or for it, saying like, oh, it's not that big of a deal because influencers are still going to get it and people can still hold off. Jim Sterling made a video on it and I haven't watched it yet. The thing is, those influencers but, aren't reviewers. PewDiePie is not a reviewer. Mark yeah. is not a reviewer. They're, like, good on them for being as popular as they are, <coughs> but I don't think, I don't see them as a trusted source for is this game worth the purchase or not? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, to some extent, I feel that Markiplier, I would trust his opinion about a certain game. Okay. And it just depends on his, like, what kind of game he's reviewing. So when he went over and did um, No Man's Sky, he was interested in it at first. And then towards the end, he was saying, I'm bored. <laughs> 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 he didn't say that specifically, but he was, you could tell he was bored. <laughs> and... For that kind of thing, that, like, was what showed me, okay, I'm definitely not getting this right now. I'm going to see where it's going to go. And it kind of showed, it concaved and showed that it was not going to work out for that game. Okay. So, so, so yeah. So, so Squeaks, you're more willing to trust a an, an influencer, these people who play these games for their own entertainment and for the entertainment mm-hmm. of the viewer rather than a traditional review yes i prefer that because they are a gamer just like me they know what they like and they know what they don't like and they will show it they will show the mechanics they will show them struggling with the mechanics or having fun with it 
And mm -hmm. so in that sense, I trust them more. In fact, I, that's how I choose to buy some indie games even. I watch them play them, and then I'm like, oh, that looks like so much fun. I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Card, what do you think? I influencer or traditional j journalist? I'd say traditional journalist because I feel they're more professional about it. But after hearing Squeaky, I kind of, I kind of see what she means. I agree with her. <laughs> but I would, I'd take both. Multiple, yeah, I think that both are important. Multiple, multiple methods are best. Are best. Yes, always, always. Okay, my husband's like... coming. <laughs> okay, so he's going to have some groceries, so going to be some noise yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, so it's, I like b both of the, both of the ideas, bo both of the standpoints, because with a, the, like an influencer, like a, what we mean by an, an influencer is like a YouTube personality that you go to for entertainment or news or non-traditional games journalism, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, la 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 like we said, your Markiplier's, your Rooster Teeth's, your PewDiePie's, your Captain Sparkle's, you know, the, these guys who, if they play a game, you're more inclined to listen to their opinion on a game or mm -hmm. watch them enjoy it and decide whether or not you might enjoy it than you are to read a traditional review. I think it's good to have kind of a foot in both camps. You know, if go, go and watch uh, these people play these games. And if you're like, oh, I tend to like the things that he likes. Mm -hmm. And he looks like he really enjoys that. And also this reviewer says it's re re really good, or maybe this guy really enjoys it, but the reviewer says it's shit, or the reviewer really l liked it, but the, the influencer said it was shit. You kind of look at everyone's opinions, and you have to kind of balance out yeah. you know, what what you you think is best. So, okay, I, I, really, like the, uh, I really like the points of view there. Um, yeah. A, a YouTuber is basically a reaction person. Mm -hmm. You have a reaction versus reviews, so I think those those are good, a good balance. I'm down. All right, Pisces. Hey, go, was... go ahead and lurk however much you want. That's fine. Yeah, lurk all you want. Uh, let's see. So what else have we got? Uh, the No Man's Sky tweets. Have you heard about that? I have not. Can you fill me in on that? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> recently, uh, on Twitter. Um, from Hello Games, there was a tweet that said No Man's Sky was a mistake, what? and that was the that was the tweet. I mean, uh, that tweet yeah, got it wasn't, like it wasn't that great of a game, but it was an indie game. There's there's no such thing as mistakes. Well, he, here's the thing: Hello Games is the people or are the people who made that game. Yeah, I, I, know. Um, I know. Okay, okay. No Sky. So so going on because there's there's a lot more more to this. Um, there were reportedly emails that went out to different, uh, to different news agencies, um, uh, eventually ident identifying themselves as, uh, Sean Murray, the director of the game, who has said, and this is kind of long, so I'm going to go ahead and read it, quote, mm -hmm. I have contacted you because the silence from Hello Games has been unwarranted and unprofessional. The community has asked me to speak up and I have a confession to make. The game was simply unfinished upon arrival. It handles force by not only Sony, but the community as well. The constant harassment and absolute gross misconduct on the community's part has made it hard to fulfill our artistic vi vision. While the pressure from Sony to release the game as soon as possible forced us to cut features. I want to apologize for what we did not deliver on, as the game does not meet up to what our artistic vision was. However... We do wish that the community was more understanding of our situation. Many people have asked for refunds despite our promise to continually improve and update No Man's Sky. We are just a small studio that has poured our blood, sweat, and tears into this project. The complete lack of respect when it comes to the work we have done absolutely saddens not only myself, but the team as well. We want to improve the game to the point we dreamed of it being and beyond. End quote. Um, thank you. Um... So that's the email that people were getting saying that it was from Sean Murray. Now, here's the Shyamalan twist. According to the official company statement, that was all a hack. I'm so sorry? according to them, 
So you're the saying Twitter someone someone hacked them and released emails saying I'm sorry. So what those emails were basically stating, you know, if I'm going to crunch those like, down, it's pretty much saying I'm sorry, feel bad for me. That's that's well, what he, I'm hearing. Er, he, he's saying I, I I'm sorry for what the game was, but it was Sony's fault for pressuring us to release it er early, and he's putting um, blame on the community for harass like forcing them to push the game out soon and harassing them when the game came out that it wasn't what they wanted it to be and that oh we all you know wanting re refunds when they always intended to add more more to the game but here's the thing now what we're he hearing is that or what the company's official statements are originally originally the statement was oh that tweet was from a disgruntled uh hello games employee then it became Oh, that disgruntled employee was Sean Murray. Now what they're saying is that oh, that that Twitter that tweet that went out and that email that was sent out were both hacks. Someone hacked into the Twitter, someone hacked the email and sent those out. There was a quote from Sean Murray oh that said God. if anything was a mistake, it was using linked LinkedIn without 2FA. Hello Games responded to Sean Murray, uh 100% not hacked anymore. Obviously those mails in that tweet that tweet were fake. We're back back to work and then with a bunch of flex emojis <laughs> oh my god just what the hell is going on yeah so <laughs> so hello games in traditional fashion now that people are being inundated with now that they're being inundated with everything after this announcement uh they're silent now um uh oh man yeah so to see you know, for mandy the final product didn't match up uh, oh that's something else um but yeah so prior to today murray's and stuff hasn't tweeted since august what matters now as always is what we do rather than what we say we're developers and our focus is first on resolving any issues people have with the game as it is then on future free updates which will improve improve expand and build on the no man's sky universe yeah i i agree with that book here like they really need a pr team they seriously yeah. need a pr team like this is yeah. ridiculous I was actually thinking about that the other day, and there is no excuse for a company that's making a big game like this to not have a PR department, even if it's just one person that monitors the you like their uh, Twitter, yeah, Facebook, if it's just, whatever. If it's just one person doing social media. That's fine. Yeah. But there was no one. There was silence. We've had yeah, silence no since August on this game, and. Yeah, it's it was absolutely rid ridiculous, and now our first radio silence break, and it's someone apparently hacking them, saying the game was a failure. I kind of want to believe that was actually Sean Murray. Yeah, and the the company is just kind of covering it up. Yeah, that's that's my head cannon on this situation. But I, uh, it's... I I don't know how to look at this. This is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's just a glorious mess, isn't it? Oh yes, oh yes. But it, 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 a lot of it would again just comes down to the fact that they were just silent. You know, you guys like it, they made a game, and I'm I'm saying you guys to Hello Games here. You made a game. It wasn't what it was hyped up to be. It wasn't what you sold it to be. And that happens in game development all the time. You mm -hmm. that happens all the time when you have to cut features to make to make deadlines. Yeah. It happens. We're gamers. The intelligent ones here, we get it. We get that it happens. But explain it. Have someone there to talk about it. You know, let someone there be like, hey guys, we're really sorry about, you know, everyone's expectations not being met. Here's the re reasons why, you know, all this stuff that we said was going to be in the game that isn't is going to be in free content pa patches. You know, you drop that free word and everyone's going to be happy. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like say it's like a, a oh the the features will be coming in future patches along with like cosmetic DLC. Mm -hmm. Like if you want if you want a different style ship, you can buy that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, so yeah, that's uh that was Hello Games th this week. That was fun. Um, yes. The last headline I have for everybody is. This was actually quite a while ago, but uh, we got our updates for the Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, Starters Final Evolutions. So if people have not seen it, 
uh, you've probably seen the pi- the pictures of the starters of um, the, li- the little guys. So we have our fully evolved uh, grass type owl, Decidui. He is a grass ghost type, the arrow quill Pokemon. The int- then we have the fire type. Final form is Incineroar. Uh, then the the water type is a water fairy called Primarina. Um, interestingly, each of the char- each of the po- Pokemon has their own special attack. So Decidueye, the grass ghost, um, he's very Robin Hoodie, mm-hmm. and I actually say Hoodie as a pun because he looks like he's got a hood and he can like pull drawstrings and it closes. Um, but uh, he can hold out his wing, pull it back, and he fires like one of his quills as an arrow. Um, but he has a special attack called Spirit Shackle. When you get hit with the move, the Pokemon can't flee or switch. So it locks the opponent to the fight. Which is going to be really good for Pokemon like... Um, competitive. It's going to be really good at compet- competitive so people can't do any like weird like switch mechanics. It'll be also good um, for like catching that Abra that teleports away. Yeah, Pokemon that teleport, Pokemon that run away. That's going to be really good. There is a new water fossil Pokemon, I believe. Um, it's like a coward po- Pokemon, and when it gets below, um, its ability is called Wimp Out. When it gets below 50% health, it tries to run. Like, just hmm. automatically. It either tries to run or switch out. So it could stop something like that. Um the we'll we'll save the fire for last because his is my fa- favorite. Uh, the water type Pre Marina, the water fairy. Her attack sparkling aria heals the burn of any po- any targeted strikes. Not gonna lie, I that don't get it. Weird. I don't know what that means. So burn is a status effect in Pokemon. It yeah. is inflicted by most fire types. Um, it reduces their attack stat as well as burns them for, I think it's 10% of their health every turn. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you want that to stay on your opponent. Yeah. So I don't get it. There's mechanics. Like maybe you can hit your ally with it. In which maybe. case, why don't you just use a burn heal? Yeah. Um, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I was going to go the water Pokemon until I heard that. And now I'm not thrilled. <laughs> uh, the final one, Incineroar, Fire Dark. And dear God, they wanted this thing to be a firefighting so bad, but there have been so many firefighting types in past mm-hmm. uh, generations. I think the last one, the most recent one, was Fire Psychic. After that, I think we've had three firefighting types. But the new move that Incineroar gets is Darkest Lariat. Um, deals damage to an enemy whilst ignoring the effects of any stat changes. Okay. So that's really good if they've been buff- buffing themselves. Um, if you've been debuffing them, like their defense, not as great. But what you would do is, like, I guess if you have someone who's like turtling up, um, you th- that's when you like, oh, okay, you've been popping, you know, things that like Harden or something. You go Darkest Lariat, and all of a sudden that doesn't matter. So they're all very situational. I mm-hmm. honestly think Decidueye has the most useful. Which one yeah. is Decidueye? The uh, owl. The yeah, the owl where they can't run away. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, there, there's been a lot of news of this game. I mean, it comes out ne- next month on the 18th. Um, there was the demo that came out. Saying, let's see, someone just... On it. S-Book says, Nintendo-based XY is designed on, on the Ninja, Mage, and Paladin tropes. They seem to be continuing this trend with the Lola. They're based on the Archer, Siren, and Fighter. Very true. Very, very true. Um, if you've seen Noggin's video um, on YouTube, he talks about how the three po- the three starters, Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio, um, they all represent symbols of alchemy. Um, mm-hmm. And how there's... He's got this huge video on how this poke. Th- this game is going to represent, like, the end of po- Pokemon as we know it could possibly be a reboot of the series. It's a great video. Go and watch it. Or it's a great series of videos. I think it's, like, three hours long, all told. Three and a half hours. Um, but it's really fun to watch. But um, 
there's just so much to this game that we keep we keep getting teased about and we don't know for sure and it's killing me yeah one of the things however we know that red and blue are going to be in it so you know um, the characters the thing from manga. i'm most excited for hmm? is dudrio's gnarly haircut i love it dude dudrio right yeah bro yeah. <laughs> so anyone who hasn't seen that um um the new region is called Alola. In fact, if you look right above my head here, I have the uh, Alolan map. Actually, it's, I have the Alolan region map yeah, right there. Get a light for it. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's dark. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a light. Like, honestly, actually, my screen is the bright. Actually, if you want to just, thing. like, put Google on your screen and then just have a white screen, that actually is a lot of light. Yeah, I know. Oop. Um, but, um... Yeah, so the, the region's called the Lola. It's very uh, Hawaii-themed. But the big thing with the Lola is that we're getting a lot of the original Pokemon are having Alolan forms. And if you want to argue evolution, it's ba- ba- basically the Pokemon that have adapted to that re- region. Mm-hmm. That's why we've got, you know, Executor with the really long neck. Um, there's explanate, explanations for, for that in, vi- in other people's videos. You've got uh, rat, the new Raticate, or as people call him, Faticate, because he lives, he lives, he lives in more like food-rich environments. He, he's not like scrounging for food all the time, so he's got these big old fat cheeks. Um, but Diglett, for whatever re- reason, he's got like a little wisp of hair on his head when he evolves into. Um, he's got some uh, really nice. The trio. Looks. Oh man, he looks like the Beach Boys. Like they look slightly more tanned I, I'd and say- just. Like, I'd say more, uh, that 90s band uh, Hanson. Yeah, yeah, they've got some serious Hanson hair go- going on. I can dig it. Um, I'm just waiting for uh, Gaijin Gooba's video explaining all that. Cause I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah that's, I think the uh, most ridiculous one that I've seen so far is the new Persian. God, right? What's he that? looks so derpy. I'm gonna oh put my gosh. Link, I'm gonna put a lit link to that in here. So let's look. Yeah. Alolan. Per, it's the first result. Alolan Persian. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's images. so stupid looking. Uh, image. Boom, boom. Copy. Let's go here. Put it in here. For those of you watching live, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. If you're gonna watch the recording, um, I don't know. Just look it up. Look it up, yeah. yeah. The Elosian Meowth, I don't really get. A lot of people are like saying, oh, he's like, he's like flamboyant. Um, some people are going so far as to call him like gay, but it's mostly just like, because everyone's like, he's he is, chill. He is he's very chill. fabulous. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, too. We keep saying he because of the, the main Meowth char- character. Like, that's true. The, the Elosian Meowth is like this weird really light purple mm-hmm. yeah he's and he, he's got this kind of coy look in his eye and then he evolves to persian and he just looks like a purple persian with a fat head it looks like a cartoon like a little kid drew the cartoon face on it yeah there's a lot of what people i mean so in the pokemon fandoms and there's what people call fake where <laughs> it's just people designing their own pokemon yeah. A lot of people are saying these care. A lot of the Pokemon look like Fakemon. Gosh. Although I do like the explanation for Grimer and Muck. Yeah, that's fine. Grimer I don't and mind Muck, that. If you look them up, they're like multicolored. Um, apparently, it's because Grimer and Muck were some Pokemon who were introduced to the Alolan re- region to deal with pollution. Hmm. Okay. So that's why they're all like multicolored because they're like they're still new to this environment. And they're like just absorbing different kinds of pollution from the the area. I like. Right. Um, anyone else? Anyone else has some stuff they want to talk yeah, about? Or moving on. Um, <laughs> this is yeah. actually pretty old. Okay. Like this was a study that I just found recently, mm-hmm. done back in August. Um, let's see here. It is. Uh, da, 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 where is it? I'm trying to. I'm trying to find my sources here. No, uh, no it's done by the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, who okay. um, did a study on 12,000 high school students in Australia, and there was a correlation found between 
the students that played video games every day, there's a positive mm-hmm. correlation between the students who played games every day and higher test scores. Interesting. Correlation, not causation, yeah, right? There's only it's only correlation right now. I wish that mm-hmm. there were more studies going on so I could have a larger, like, uh, I I could have more stuff to back it. But this is an interesting find. And the same study also found that more time spent on, say, Facebook, Twitter, and social media, there was a negative correlation between more time spent on there, and they received lower test scores. Yeah. That's really, it's really interesting to think about that, because I would have argued that if you have people who are playing games, that those test scores would go down because they're more easily distracted. But it almost sounds like, I wonder if the data is, oh, they're actually, like, there's a better focus there, like they're be- better at focusing on a task. Or another thing that was brought up could be that it just so happened that the students with the higher test scores were also playing the most games. Because it's no, it's no secret that the smart kids like to play video games. The nerds, yeah. the nerds like their games. That's very true. That's that's a really interesting point. Like it, it kind of defeats the pur- purpose if they're already gaming. Yeah. It's like, oh, let's get all the nerds. It's like, well, of course the nerds probably have the higher te- test scores and mm-hmm. they're probably also gamers. That's not to say that's like a fact. Like, I'm sh- there's people, I know pe- people who have really high test scores that don't play games. I know people who play games who have shit test scores. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, this but, also goes um, hand in hand with another study that was found comparing luminosity, like the effects of luminosity, who is um, actively advertised as like, this is this is a brain expanding game, comparing mm-hmm. it to Portal Two and Portal Two just demolishing it in test in testing. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Esbook br- brings up an interesting point. It probably depends on the game. Yeah. Games that mm-hmm. use puzzle elements, quick thinking, pro- problem solving skills. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very very true. It, it probably depends on the game they're they're playing. You know, if you're playing just some junk, then you uh, know it, like mobile games. Yeah, you know. If you're playing mostly mobile games like can- Candy Crush, your brain's probably mush. But yeah. if if you're doing something like say, oh god, I don't know, even something like Brain Age. Brain Age was fine because that was just straight math. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, something like Portal Two, like the puzzle solver, or the original God of War, which had really good puzzles. Yeah. Even Zelda has puzzles oh, in yeah. it. You have to think and explore. Oh yeah, and that's what that. I love when games do that. I love when this, this, they can take I a step back we from can it. Go into the gen- tangential thing of tangential learning through video games, like to bring up World yeah. of Warcraft again. Like being able to manage a guild. That's oh, incredible. God. That's incredible. people who can manage yeah. a guild are amazing, because you're ba- basically running a bit business that isn't actually making money. Mm-hmm. Because you've got officers who handle like smaller pro like smaller issues then you've got maybe you know you've got to keep all your players in line you've got to deal with any drama when you do raids you've got to make sure everyone's pulling their weight doing their correct job you have to identify you know who's doing things wrong then out of raid you have to make sure people are prepared for the raid you've got to make sure there you know there's mm-hmm. no big drama it's a it's a thing to run a guild put that stuff on your resume I, oh yeah <laughs> I really wish I could. You I bet you could people. explain it. If you sat down with an employer, I bet you could explain away like how you can be a manager with that. But as soon as it's you people man- manage it's yeah. people management. Micro as, and yeah. as soon as you mention that all this is from a video game that drops all validity. I mean, yeah, but it depends on the person, I guess. You yeah. just have to be like, creative with it and creative with the la- language, you know, like I'm sure give me 10 minutes i could come up with a way to describe how you got those skills without saying they were from a video game yeah Yeah. i basically like for me for being a nanny i was like really scrounging up because i only had one job before that and it was something that i couldn't use again because i had a bad relationship with the boss so i basically Mm -hmm. had nothing so i was just scrounging up stuff i'd like i have five brothers who are younger than me that has to count for something and they're like we're sold. We need somebody <laughs> who knows how to take care of little kids. If you can change a diaper, that's all we need. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. Dude, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean that that study is really interesting. I I love when people are actually using studies to talk about the positives in in gaming and not the negatives, especially when people try to you know point out the classic oh video games make people more violent. It's like no, shut up. That there's no, no there people are been, violent. No, there's been no. Um, God, what's the, the word? best evidence has been a weak correlation. Yeah. Especially when you want to look at, look at all this gun violence in America. It's vi- video games. Really? Because violent games exist in Canada, in the UK, in Australia. Fucking Australia hasn't had a mass shooting in like, what, 10 years? <laughs> you know what they realized the problem was? The guns, not the people. I'm not going to get into the argument. <laughs> no, don't, but, don't even start with that. I don't understand. That. Yeah, but it's... You can't blame the video games when it's like, really? Because it's there's no, there's no. Video games doesn't have a good enough. Fine. Yeah, there's not a good enough reason to blame it. It's just like basically blaming almost any other thing. It's like I blame, as you were saying, guns. I blame guns, but blame it's movies. actually the people. It's the yeah. people that you need to blame. <laughs> that's that's how I view it. Amen to that. Now moving on from politics. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, there was, there was one other thing I wanted to say about the stuff that we were going with. I've heard many studies about how um, playing video games helps, like, dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, huh. go on. So, like, um, if you're, it's just like any other thing. If you're, like, doing regular tasks every day, you're building your brain and you're using your brain. Doing video games, as long as it's interactive, as long as it's, like, something that is repetitive, and then you're learning at the same time, like, you're doing different puzzles, it can actually help to be able to um, help you be able to remember stuff better, at least from a study that I was reading. It was, it's very interesting. So it's exercises and repetition. Exercises and repetition, just like what they try to do in normal life, where they try to have a person, like they want a person to be there every single day, and they want them to talk and interact with them, because mm-hmm. it helps build rem- um, memory. Okay. Um, so it's it's really cool for that to use that to use video games for that. They actually have like video game therapy for them. Okay. I feel like that's I something dig it. Uh, one of our partners is doing with uh, anxiety gaming. Yeah, that sounds. I mean, that's big, that big in itself, to too. Yes. Video games is a huge medium for lots of things. Yeah. It Absolutely. There's there's so much that you can do with using video games in mm-hmm. po- positive You know, talking about people with dementia, look, look at one of the ways that they promoted the Wii. You know, they're like, oh, you know, you can put this in... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Pisces. Um they they showed a lot lot of it with like elderly pe- people you, you using it to get up and play Wii sports. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a way to keep people active, which mm-hmm. is is great. You know, I haven't seen a video game encourage physical activity since DDR. <laughs> and then they came out and with the Wii. Even after that, there's Pokemon Go. Yeah, mm-hmm. it re- it does doesn't happen often, but every now and then, and I would like to see it more with more augmented like mobile augmented reality. Mm-hmm. I think is a um, a really interesting market that I want to see more companies use mm-hmm. because what better way to get gamers up and about than to make our gaming on the go? Because you have something like the Switch, and oh man, we haven't even talked about the Switch. Yeah. Um, you have something like the Switch where everyone's like, oh, it's gaming on the go. It's not really gaming on the go. It's gaming when I'm sitting somewhere else. Yeah, you know it's it's oh I'm at you know I'm on a train I'm on a plane I'm waiting somewhere in a room. Um, I'm waiting in a room while my, my friends are on the uh, rooftop having a party next to me and they want to they want me to join, but I don't I don't yeah. want to stop playing Mario. <laughs> yeah, that's that was that part made me mad actually somewhat. I'm just like really you're gonna go to a party and play a game. Or, At least uh, yeah. like she gave a controller to somebody else, but I'm like, that doesn't help socially very you know what I much. Found out? Or hanging out with my friends after a great game of basketball, we're all going to sit around by uh, two switches. Play and more basketball! And play NBA 2K17. <laughs> Gosh. You know what I found out was some of those games, it was a 
God, what did, how did they describe that? It was like a, um, it was like a wish, a wish list trailer hmm. because not all of those games were actually being played on the screen. They were superimposed. Yeah. Oh, that's, that was easily seen. Like, um, yeah, it's Bethesda like, came out later and said like, yeah, we have no plans to put Skyrim on the switch. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we currently have no plans for that. And it's like, oh, well, but Skyrim was on. It's like, yeah, they just super, superimposed that. So it's like, it's almost like a, a a wish list demo of it. And it's like, uh, wasn't this your trailer? Shouldn't you be showing us what it can do? Yeah, or like <laughs> games that are being developed for it. Yeah, you know, like that Pokemon game. I hear that's pretty damn popular. Why not show that? <laughs> or maybe, uh, I don't know, porting Super Smash Brothers to it. You don't even have to make a whole new game. Just port the current one from the Wii U. Yeah, onto port it. the current one. Just balance it out a bit. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Card and his roommate made a uh, a me of me, and mm-hmm. it is so much fun to play. <laughs> even when I even when I lost, I was a force on the field. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And then Kuma, Card has one as well. So Kuma as a gunner is a force to be reckoned with. Gosh. We should um, we should make a video at some point of all of us playing our Mies in Super Smash Brothers. Oh goodness, that, that should be a thing. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, just I I want to see more com- companies make gamers get up and go. You know, don't don't just give me a handheld that I can play once I'm somewhere else. <laughs> give me something that I want to go out into the world and do something with. Like there's, I don't have it right now. But there's a game or a, a, an app called like Fog of the World where the entire world is covered in, a, in like gray fog. And as you travel, it reveals like the area around you, which is just a way for you to track. It's like, oh, you know, where, you know, where have I been? What play, places can I go? I remember this one guy in a podcast re- recently just showed that he went to South Korea and uh, he showed on his Fog of the World that he stepped into and then out of North Korea. Ha. Um, yeah. So it's like, well, you know, make sure no one ever sees that because you're dead. Um, <laughs> or never, never one will ever hear from you again. Yeah. You're gone forever. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I would love the idea of another Pokemon go that was, you know, actually good. <laughs> Um, I they've been updating it very well. Updating? Yeah, updating yeah. Pokemon Go. Like the most recent update is really actually fun. That's the uh, the Halloween version, right? You get like yeah, the, the Halloween stuff. You get double. Oh my candy. gosh, you get double of everything. Yeah. What? So I'm like, and they also added a whole lot of um, Gastly's. Um, any kind of dark Pokemon, basically, like um, Meowth, all sorts. And so I have, like, almost 130 candy of um, Ghastly, so I can get a Gengar whenever I go to work again, and, like, I want to show the kid when I get a Gengar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, like, I got it in under a day. Like, before, I only had 15, and then by the end of the day, I had 130. I'm like, what the crap? (laughs) (laughs) Fun. (laughs) (laughs) Curses. All right. Yeah. Uh, any other big, big headlines, big news from the week? Not off the top of my head. Mm-mm. Oh, man, that was that was some really good discussions, though. Like, there's a, been a lot going on this past, past week. Um, so I guess if no one else has anything they'd like to discuss, uh, well, let's see. Uh, what's coming up for Gamer Culture this month? Um, expect some some solo work from everybody. I've yeah, challenged expect, the team. Expect a lot of random stuff coming out. <laughs> I've challenged the team to for everyone to at least produce one, uh, one solo content v- video. Um, I'm hoping we get more people of the team than normal, uh, making content. Obviously, some of us, you know, we already do. Some people that are on the team, you guys have probably never seen. So. Really hoping we get some more of that. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so we're going to get some more content in November. Uh, we'll have more to talk about once, or I'll have more to talk, talk about once Pokemon drops on the 18th, and then Final Fantasy 15 drops on the 31st. Uh, really excited about those. 
Um, other than that, keep following us. Uh, uh, don't forget, we now have our YouTube channel, which this is going to be going up on um, probably uh, by Wednesday. Um, is when it's supposed to go up. Um, maybe er earlier for us. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's um, obviously just look up Gamer Culture on YouTube. You'll find us. Um, don't forget to like and follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. Squeaky has her own channel. She's on mm -hmm. Twitter. She's on YouTube. Also, check, she's on the Facebook. Check these guys out. The Grand Geek Gathering. I hear they're yeah. pretty cool. Oh, people. yeah, those guys. They're pretty cool. Yeah, the Grand Geek Gathering, of which we were a part, part of, we do a lot of different shows, a lot of different articles. We are at thegrandgeekgathering.com, as it says right there. Um, it is right below you, other than, You can just yep. point down. Right below. Literally right yep, in there you go. Yeah. order somewhere for me. <laughs> I'm, watching the, uh, I'm watching the actual Twitch page, well, so it's everything's it, like... Right here for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Other than that, um, th thank you everybody for tuning in. For all of your gamer culture needs, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch TV, and thegrandgeekgathering.com, as I already said. This show is brought to you by the Grand Geek Gathering Network. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us. Special thanks to the band Carbonine for granting us permission of the use of the song Say I Am. Keep watching, guys, because pretty soon we might have a different song waiting for you at the beginning of our videos or at the end. Who knows where it's going to go? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Join the <laughs> gathering. Stay cultured. Have a great week and GGG. All right, cut this shit. <laughs>